The match is now tied one to one, and Ahmed Ali uh, from New York is going to be uh, opening this game. Now, the procedure on the break, uh, Ajaya, and I'm curious, what is he aiming at off the, the pack? Is he looking at? Yeah, typically, what players do is they aim at the second red, uh, that uh, you know, from the from the bottom of the triangle. Okay and uh, strike that half ball or, okay. or at the edge of the ball and come around uh, the angles to be behind the green. Just yeah. just like what uh, uh, Ali did. Yeah, and it was interesting to me because he played it inside the blue. The first time I saw that, I thought that was very challenging to do. Yes, actually they put right English, uh -huh. which actually swings the ball uh, at, at a much uh, wider angle off the uh -huh. bottom cushion uh -huh. and comes in between the pink and the blue. Yeah. And, and that one, he executed the break the way that you had recommended. He was behind the green, almost perfect position. Yes, it left him. It left uh, Ife a tough shot, uh -huh. and he had to go for the pot. He had yeah. no other option, and uh, he was actually lucky not to leave uh, Ali with an easier shot than this. Yeah, and I think you know when, when you look at that, that's that's really an advantage. But, uh, a lot of times, breaking the ball is going to be a big advantage in this game if you're accurate at it. That's right. I, I think that when you get in that position like uh, May was in, if it's just as hard to play safe as it is to shoot the pot, then you might as well shoot the pot. You can score. Yes, that's right. And I'll leave him kind of for, a, for an interesting choice. It was like... Yeah, he went for a really risky red yeah. and uh, left Ife with, uh, with, a, with an easy red. And uh, he's got a great opportunity now. He's uh, going to play the blue and get back towards the reds. Oh, he didn't play a very good shot there. He wanted to avoid cannoning that way. Yes. Yeah, he's tough here. He's probably going to have to use the rest, the long rest, or either that or he's going to have to elevate his bridge over the stack. That's right, you yeah. Know, a pack of reds, okay? We call it the stack and pull. And here again, like like most ball games, you know, a fraction makes such a such a big difference. I mean, if he, if he was just a millimeter uh, uh, narrower with with uh, with his angle, he would avoid it that red mm -hmm. and be in a, in a much better position. That was a good shot to see the effect of, of the nap in inside English. As you saw the ball actually taking an inordinate turn towards the bottom rail. That's right. The uh, the table is brushed from the balk end to the uh, to the end where the black is, mm -hmm. and. Um, there is, uh, like, like Tony, you were mentioning, there is, there is a nap that actually, uh, a, a nap is nothing but, but the, uh, uh, it's the weave of the cloth, the weave right? of the cloth, yeah. essentially, mm -hmm. and uh, they are directed towards the black. Mm -hmm. He's in a good position here. Yeah. So again, he wants to uh, get to the reds by the black. Or actually, there's a red just by the pink, so he probably play that first. Yeah, it looks like he can go right down. And of course, at some point in time, he's going to try to find a way to go in and, and disturb the reds and make them more open. Now, is it preferable generally? And of course, every situation is different. Every frame, balls, you know, are in different positions. But do you prefer trying to go to, when you want to disturb the reds or break the reds open? Is it it's preferable to go off a of color, or is it? Oh, he's missed a very easy shot there. Uh, but yeah, coming back to your point, uh, yeah. Tony. Um, different. Uh, again, it, it depends on the situation. But but typically, uh, most players break the pack uh, of the black or the blue. Okay. Uh, they, uh, um, you know, that's uh, typically what what happens. Uh, uh, you know, most of the the reds end up being packed around the pink mm -hmm. spot, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, it's ideal to either break it, uh, you know, with uh, uh, with an angle from the black or uh, the blue. Ife has uh, at least three or four reds open now before he has to go into the pack.
he has a couple of options here. He can draw the uh, the white ball back uh -huh. and and miss the red on the uh, on the right hand side and and be on the uh, uh, red by the pink, or uh, that's that's exactly what he did. He also had an option to actually cannon the red directly uh, from the black. Um, You're saying the red was on yes, the cushion? Yes, yes, yeah. but uh, he didn't have uh, you know too much of an angle there, and that's why he preferred this route. Uh -huh. well, he's got an angle now, and whether he could draw the ball enough to do this or not. Yeah, he still if, pot the black. Yeah. He uh, actually the player has to be concerned in this position of not knocking another red like a loose red into the pocket. It's a foul. It's be a devastating error. Great shot. Right. Yeah. He uh, he didn't fully commit himself to breaking the pack open. There. No, but what he did was he used the pack to to, to stop the momentum of the cue ball and it put him position on this red down here, and he might get another shot back at the stack right here. The speed is good. Yeah, again, he has a couple of options. He can go, uh, go into the pack to the uh, to the left hand of the of the red there, half ball, and uh, he would still be on on the red to the middle. That's about the pink, but uh, he's he's played a, a, a more conservative shot where. Yeah. Thirty-two. This is where he wishes he was about six inches tall. Exactly. Well, he's going to now, this is interesting. All the snooker guys are, have all the best equipment uh, that I saw down there. And uh, the extensions are very accurate extensions, as opposed to a lot of the American extensions. While the American pool cues seem to be far more refined than snooker cues, the additional accessories seem to be far more refined than snooker because of the distance of the table. That's right. Existed. Yeah, you have all kinds of extensions in snooker, and uh, unlike pool, the uh, a typical snooker cue is actually cut uh, at three quarters length. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, it was interesting because American snooker cues. If you ordered a cue that's a snooker cue in America, it would always come long. 40. 60 inches is the way they made them. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Nice touch. So, so Tony, you were saying that uh, snooker was extremely popular in San Francisco. We had, the, um, there were two rooms, Cochran's and the Palace, that were across the street from each other that were 24 hour operations. One had 16 tables total, five of which were 6 by 12s. The other one had 26 tables with six of those 6 by 12s. So then, one block there were 11 tables and they were almost fully populated all the time. There's a lot of, you know, naturally there's a lot of money play going on. Right. And, uh, you know, that's how people in America hone their games. Which which decade was this? Uh, uh, it was in the 70s, the 60s, well, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and into even the, late, the early 80s, yeah. Thank you. 